Uh, so today I'm here to tell you about a game. Um, and it kind of began with me wondering, like if you played the game Oregon Trail, like what would happen if your character had a racial identity? Because in some versions of the game you get a, a, a class or a profession that can influence the outcome of the game, but race and gender are completely ignored by the game. And what would happen uh, under those circumstances in 1848? I think we know some of the answers, but maybe we don't know some of the others. Um, some games, of course, do include race. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons has race in it, of course, but it also kind of reinforces some racial tropes in a lot of ways. Um, other games, Monopoly, Life, those ignore race, and um, they perpetuate this kind of colorblind neoliberal fantasy where it's just all um, chance and uh, meritocracy. So for this project, my questions were, can I develop a game that models some form of raci forms of racism? What could I learn by doing this? And what would happen when people played it? So I do this as a white male from a largely middle class background. That's me down in the lower corner there, 1966. Um, my privilege has protected me for my entire life. I've never lived under the realities of being oppressed under racism. And I'm on an imperfect journey with this, and I have my own assumptions, beliefs, and prejudices. I had an opportunity to try out this project in a games design class uh, at the university this past summer, where the assignment was basically to create an educational game that was analog, took about an hour to play, and was educational. So it was like a three-week design sprint with three rounds of play testing. Here's the team. It's me and three other undergrads. They conveniently put the grad students in the class in charge of the projects. Um, so we had uh, an, an, a visiting East Asian student, uh, an Asian American student, two white students, one gay student. That's kind of our positionality. So we designed a game called Crystal City, and it's a board game. It's a fantasy theme. Each player assumes the role of a character on a quest to reach the city. And you can be an elf, a human, dwarf, or an orc, which kind of metaphorically represent um, racial constructs in real life. And like a lot of other board games, you start in a place of origin, you pass through stages of life, schooling, career choices, random events, dice rolls and fortune cards kind of influence how things go and characters get gold, health, and prestige or social capital. It's kind of familiar to uh, other games, other games you may have played. However, the game also models race and the way race influences outcomes in real life through first and second order um, mechanisms. So in theory, any player can win or lose the game regardless of race. However, the deck, the fortune card deck, is literally stacked against elves, dwarves, and orcs. And I'll just let you read some of these to kind of see how the game goes. So not everyone's luck is the same, and the results are racialized in the game. And all the mechanisms uh, in the cards are modeled after pretty well understood and researched mechanisms in real life. So although life is often unjust, we also wanted to include some counter stories. So some of the cards have um, somewhat positive outcomes as well. So the design process kind of asks us some questions like about racialized outcomes, like you know what are the mechanisms and how can a game mimic or simulate these within some sort of metaphorical story or is that even a good idea? Um, our hope is that the game kind of allows people, particularly whites, to experience racialized outcomes because like in my own life I haven't experienced those. I've read about them, I've observed them, I've seen them, but I haven't ever experienced them. We see this game being played in schools by students, but especially among uh, predominantly white staff. And during our game testing, we noticed that players really talked freely and they really interrogated the mechanisms that were being represented in the game. They really asked themselves, wait a minute, why is this happening? What's going on? Um, for future work, the game still has a few breaks in it that kind of need some refinement, but overall, it's kind of playable. It needs some uh, aesthetic upgrades, some artwork and stuff. I think a goal it would be to have this as a printable PDF game that would be free for anyone. Um, also, expansion packs, homophobia, gender bias, Islamophobia. You can imagine um, adding layers of intersectionality to this. Uh, could the game be made digital? 
if it was in a digital form, um, could players uh, play with or modify the mechanisms in the game? Could they increase them or decrease them and play with them and ins experiment with them in different ways like that? And uh, try to determine things like that. So if you'd like to play Crystal City or contribute to the design or just tell me what a terrible idea it is or anything else you have to say about it, please do get in touch with me. I would love to talk with you about this. Thank you.